Welcome back to the Graduate Guide. Today we're joined by Claudia. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Uh, you are the strategy director at Great Influence. You can start off by giving the listeners an idea of what Great Influence is and what do you do? So Great Influence is a personal branding agency. Um, we work mainly with CEOs and founders, but also leadership teams um, to help them with build their personal brands, basically. Um, so my role is to kind of like set the direction of that um, and kind of like help people find the gaps in the conversations that they need to be in and help them understand their best positioning um, for the industry that they're in. And this is a, a pretty new industry, right? Yes. When was it you became conscious that there was a career in this at all? Um, to be honest, I didn't know that there was when I first started the job. Um, I kind of got into it because I was doing it for myself. Um, and I realized quite quickly after a couple of months of just posting on LinkedIn um, that people were starting to like message me about stuff. Um, and then Ash, founder of Great Influence, reached out to me and uh, slid into the DMs and was just like, oh, I've seen what you're posting. Like, would be great to chat. Um, so I actually freelanced for a couple of months at the start. And even at that time, I didn't really like know what personal branding was as like a bigger concept for me. It was just kind of more in the content side of things. Um, and I think over the last four years, it's honestly been like prolific, the growth. And I think we were just saying before, like now every other person that I see on LinkedIn is like either understanding or becoming a personal brand manager. Um, so like the explosion in the industry has been huge over the last 12 months. And when you were at university, studying in South relations at yes. Leeds what was your idea of your career back then what were you thinking because yeah like I said this probably wasn't a viable career path Ooh. back then <laughs> um I don't know to be honest like this sounds really dumb I think but in my head I was like I always knew that I didn't want to do like um a grad scheme or something like that like I always knew I wanted to do something a bit different I didn't have any idea what that was really and I think I remember being sat in the library walking around not doing any work obviously and just like bumping into people and chatting asking them what they were going to do or what they're applying for and like I'd bump into this really smart person and they'd be like oh I'm applying for the grad scheme at Audi unreal next person I bump into oh I'm applying for the grad scheme at Audi next person I bump into oh I'm applying. and I just thought like you're all smart you're mm. all great like you're all nice you're all intelligent like how do you get the job and you don't get the job mm. and I just remember thinking like I don't know, I don't want to do like that same thing. Um, so I always kind of had in my head that like, yeah, something different, what that different thing was, I didn't really know mm. at the time. Um, and I think like I definitely had the few years of like floundering around after. I always kind of had in my head that I wanted to work for a small business, I think. Um, so yeah, kind of like, I don't know, it was just like maybe the conscious choice to think about things a little mm. bit differently at the start anyway. Um that feeling of you know wanting to do something different was that a like a determined feeling or was it quite a manic depressed feeling did you feel lost in that feeling yeah a little bit at times I think everyone who's like started work or been like entering into the working world feels a bit lost at times but it was also determined and I think like so I moved back home for a little bit when I was maybe 23 and I remember like I was applying for marketing jobs, so I worked in an agency for a year after uni in Leeds, um, which was interesting, actually, and probably set me on the path that I'm on now, more so than I realised at the time. Um, but I remember applying for jobs in Birmingham, where I lived, and I was just like, I don't even really want this job, but I'm just kind of going through the motions at the moment because I know I need to have a job. I know I want to do something that's maybe a little bit creative. But I actually, so I applied for maybe 20 got five or six interviews got two jobs offered to me at the end and I was like I know if I take this like I'll be stuck mm. I'll be stuck in Birmingham because you get into the routine you get used to a salary like all of a sudden your life is comfortable and I think like that's where I never wanted to be is like comfort and I was like if I take this job now I know I'll be here for the next three four years so I made the conscious decision I signed the contract I think and then after that I was like actually I'm not going to do it um and my mom was obviously fuming. She was like, you need to get a job. Um, but I think it was that decision in that moment. If I hadn't have done that and like mm. literally thrown the contract in the bin, I wouldn't be where I am now. Like, I think you need that fear a bit. Yeah, and I think like, a lot of careers is, it's very easy to sit and say, oh, the graduate guys about helping people find their dream job. But I think it's really like the allocation of the right person into the right career industry yeah. role for them. And I think for you, 
you know, you probably could have lived like you know a happy enough life in in, in a corporate or sure. on a grad scheme. But I mean, did you feel like that decision? I mean, a lot of people maybe don't do what they really want to do straight yeah. out of university. Um, what was your yeah? What was going through your head when you were making that decision? Did you feel the significance of it? You sort of alluded to it there, right? I think so, yeah. And I think, like, when you leave uni, you're so happy to get any job. Hmm. You know what I mean? You're like, you've spent three, four years working towards something. Like, the big shiny medal at the end is, like, entering the world of work. And everyone thinks of step one. Hmm. And they think, like, if I'm earning a salary, like... I owe them like the op- the opportunity is amazing like thank you so much like f- to just for me to get paid a salary like thank you thank you thank you and I think like I saw a TikTok the other day this is where I get most of my advice from these days but it was basically saying like think about the lifestyle that you want before you choose a job mm. and I think not enough people do that and you get a little bit more in industries that are kind of like more cemented in their ways so like law finance things like that you pick that when you're 18, you kind of know what you're getting yourself into. So maybe when you're entering the world of work, it's a little bit more kind of like set in your mind. If you're not sure what you want to do and you get to that stage and the gates open and you're going into the workforce, pick what lifestyle you want, because that's the lifestyle you're going to, you could potentially have for the next 30, 40 years. And I think like your mindset in that situation is typically like, I feel like I owe this company something for taking me on board because it is so difficult to get a job now and I completely understand it. But I think if you shift slightly and think like, okay, I'm making this decision not for just right now, but also for the next like 10, 20 Mm. years and you set yourself on a bit of a path, like I think it just changes your mindset, shifts slightly. And don't get me wrong, it is such a privilege to be able to make a decision in that point. And there are so many instances where like I was in this case where I was like, I need a job, Mm. like any job at this point. But I think if you are lucky enough to be in a situation where you have a bit more freedom to think like, okay, like what's the lifestyle that I want further down the line? And that's I think what I was thinking is like it's a short term sacrifice now. But like long term, I know that so many people that get stuck in a career like five or six years in and they think I'm too far down the line. Whereas I think I made the decision maybe a bit earlier to go, I don't want to be stuck a few years down the line. So I'm going to make a hard decision now. I think once you've got to that state of mind that, you know, you want to work something for your life, that supports your lifestyle, maybe a smaller business, um, you then have to pick the right small business or the yeah, right startup, which I know as well is a hard task because hey, you joined Great Influence as a very early employee and you know, you just so happen to get very well, lucky. I say lucky, but I'm not. Very lucky. But I, I wonder how much luck was actually, you know, how much did you de-risk that, that process? Like, What about those initial conversations with Ash made it feel like the right next step for you? Yeah, and I think I think there's kind of two ways at looking at it, one is luck of like meeting the right people at the right time in your life for sure. And another part of it is like intention. And I think subconsciously or without me really knowing at the time, like I was intentionally putting my thoughts and values out into the world by sharing my thoughts on social media. And I think again, like I always think it's so wild to me that the biggest, one of the biggest choices that you make in your life is your career and how so many people leave that fate in the hands of other people. Mm. And like, I always think like, I wanna be kind of dictating the direction of my career at all times. Whereas I think if you, or like at least moving myself forward towards something all the time. Whereas if you think about it really, when people are kind of like choosing their career paths and going through it, they have like peak moments. And those moments are like when when you're actually sitting down and writing the job application is when you're, projecting yourself into like a new career trajectory whereas like by actually taking the reins into your own hands and like constantly for me working towards something on social like it's actually you're just moving yourself incrementally along in some kind of direction whereas if you're just you're putting in a job application you send it off you wait your career is then in someone else's hands in that situation and I just thought like again like I don't want to do that I think every decision that I've made throughout my career has been like how do I choose what I want in this situation and honestly I I think so many people 
don't. Mm-hmm. I completely hear what you're saying about like uh, small businesses and it's it's so difficult. But I think actually if you put yourself in the driving seat a bit more mm-hmm. and like I'm biased towards this because it helped me get my job and it's also what I do. But I do think posting on social, whatever platform it is, like again, is just incrementally moving you forwards in a direction because what you do when you put out things into the world is also attracts people mm. that think similarly to you. And I think if you are looking to join a smaller company, like it makes sense to start putting things out into the world that are gonna attract people that think similarly to you. Yeah. And fortunately for me, that person was Ash. And I think it's like it's building that reputation so that because in a lot of jobs all you really have is a CV and one interview, oh, and it's so painful. Like I don't know how yeah. people do it. No, I know because it's like well, it's all about how can you just show off like a a very uh, matter of fact side of you know, what you yeah. have done, it, and it's not about you know who you are or what you could bring. And and I think you know then it comes down to you know the interviewer needs to have a great line of questioning. And I think like you're saying it's. I feel like in those kind of more corporate roles, it's hard to empower yourself to take the driving seat. Do you know what I mean? Like, it, yeah, hundred percent. But, but it it kind of is still. I think anything careers and even what you do, mass a massive part of what you do is storytelling, right? Mm-hmm. Um, what do you think? You know, has been the importance or significance of storytelling in in your career and the work you do now? It's so easy to think like no one cares. Why is it important? But actually, there'll always be moments that are important to you. And I think that's the best way to look at it is like, what's really important to you in your career and your history? And I think that's kind of the way that I've looked at it. And I think there's a a way of looking at like building a personal brand or like sharing your story that is just like, go through the motions, like tell people, this is what I did when I graduated uni, this I got my first job, this is, those might not be the stories that are most important to you. And I think it's like reflecting on actually what holds value to you rather than what you think people want to hear in that situation. And actually, when you do that, just by kind of proxy, you attract people, again, that are kind of interested in what you're saying, Mm. because it clearly means more to you than something that just ticks box. Do you feel the stigma around personal branding? And and, and if so, what do you do to combat that? Yeah, I think it's really difficult because I think personal branding has this kind of like reputation attached to it um and it's frustrating because i think the immediate thoughts when people think of building a personal brand is they think like shit posting on linkedin mm. let's be honest yeah linkedin in itself already has a bad reputation as a platform a little bit on other platforms yeah um well i'll say that or not. yeah of course <laughs> I, i'm not gonna um and i think it's difficult because like that's that's like general right and i think like I love LinkedIn. I've been using it for the last four or five years. It's been instrumental in my career. It's been instrumental for so many people around me as well. And I think what's happening now is like a lot of people are waking up to that there's a big opportunity on this platform and it's kind of being saturated with like similarity. Mm. And I think like it's frustrating because it is so valuable and it is so useful and it still carries this little reputation that's like, oh, it's a bit cringe. Every time I tell someone what I do and I talk about LinkedIn, oh, but isn't it a bit cringe? <laughs> so what? Yeah. But it's literally so what? Who cares? Because it's not cringe when I'm getting opportunities that help me in my career. It's not cringe when we're getting new clients. It's not cringe when we're hiring great people. I think also you've, you've found your voice on it, right? Like Yeah, I think, I think so. In the beginning, it is really hard to, to like be your authentic self with like chest and 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 right in the way that you want to because you don't yeah. know if it'll be rewarded by the algorithm or whatever but but i think what you said there is exactly already where people go wrong like mm. don't think of the algorithm yeah because already then you're trying to take a box of something else like when i when i first started doing it i was speaking about course life crisis and my experience leaving uni and how it was difficult and like at that time i was working in student marketing it was something that I had just experienced. So it was really relevant to me. And I think maybe shift the thinking from like authenticity to relevancy. And I think maybe that helps a little bit because it's like, what am I experiencing right now? Um, And instead of thinking like, how do I get a thousand followers or 10,000 followers or 50,000 followers? I think what am I experiencing right now? And what value can I add to people that are experiencing the same thing? Whether that's, sharing what I'm going through in the hope that someone relates to it and it makes them feel a little bit better 
or I've actually just had this experience. I've learned a little bit about it. Here's my advice. And I think like people always think they need to start big, whereas actually yeah. I think start small. Yeah, and I think definitely that on a person side that's true, but also as a student when I'd open the platform, it, I was like, why would I? Why would I use it? Yeah, like, you know, you're like successful people congratulating other successful people, and emojis <laughs> flying everywhere, and you're like, yeah, where do yeah. I, as a student that doesn't know what they want to do, where do I fit into this whole equation? And and I think it's hard. I mean, I struggle to even think back to when I really learned how to use it because as you know. All of a sudden, it's like everything in my business. You know, I meet the best people from it. You know, I feel like I can just message anyone at this point and have some sort of chance. You know, even if I don't know them or I have no yeah. right to reach them, and I could get a response. And I think once you realise the power of it and how much it can offer, then the platform starts to make more sense, and you might want to start posting, for example, right? Mm -hmm. I think. Honestly, like hand on heart, I think students have the biggest opportunity on the platform. Or if you're really early in your career, you have the biggest opportunity on the platform because everyone wants to help people that are just starting out. And I think like if someone messaged me and was just like, I've just graduated uni, I don't know what the hell I'm going to do with my life. Please help. Yeah. I'd be like, I've been there. And like, of course I'll help. Of course, like if you want to chat about personal branding, whatever it is. And also everyone I know who is like deep in their career, we work mainly CEOs, founders, they're the people that they want to help. And I think like the second that you start to see it as like a tool and what you were saying there about like messaging people and like building opportunities off the back of that, like that you have more, I think, remit and access when you're a student to be able to do that. And I think like, seeing it as like an opportunity to build your network is probably the most important thing you can get from it and as a space to learn like I think that's like the shift the mental shift between platforms like you go on TikTok to just scroll you go on Insta to kind of see what everyone what everyone is up to and I think if you use LinkedIn as just like a scroll thing it's way less valuable yeah. whereas if you use it as like okay like I know that I want to get this opportunity or I always think the best way to go about it is like, okay, I have this problem in my career. Mm. Like I do, th I do this myself. Like I have this challenge in my career or like this problem that I need to solve within great influence. Like, okay, I don't know how to do it right now, but I know people that have had this problem or would know how to do it. So I'm just going to message them with this very specific thing and say, I have this challenge. How have you solved it? Or like, do you have any advice? And I think if you're a student, like you have a very clear challenge, like I want to get a job. You have all these people that have been there and had that experience, anyone who's got now got a job. And I think like the pool of people that you could message or speak to is so wide, but go to them with a very clear thing. And I think if you say like, I don't know, I'm trying to get a job at this specific company, message all the people in that company that have already been through the process you're going through. Mm -hmm. And I think like, again, what we were saying before about like putting yourself in, in the driving seat of your career, like all the people at Google have already gone through the interview process at Google. All you have to do is send all those people at Google one message. Yeah. And it's like, you're helping yourself rather than all those other people that also want to work at Google who are just sitting after they've sent their application and waiting. Yeah, and I think in addition to that, like the career exploration side of it, like for example, you could just walk down any street in, in London, you could see an office, you could see a brand that you consume every day and you can actually find out yeah. who did the partnerships there or you know who was behind the, the marketing for that amazing thing and you could message them. like. That's yeah. it. <laughs> it's so, crazy if you think like how much time pe people spend like talking about dating and on dating apps and things like that like it's so intentional for the most part <laughs> whereas like your career isn't and yet they're two probably of the biggest things in your life like it's honestly just mind-blowing to me mm. okay and so I get it building a brand on LinkedIn and you know we've used some examples of how students could you know utilize it but then does that actually make you more employable? Like say you didn't want to go into this, you know, strange world of startups yeah. and small businesses and you just wanted to get that, that corporate, you know, two years experience, for example. Does it help with your employability there? Yeah, 100%. I think it helps with your employability because like you're giving yourself more value than someone else. And I think like 
A, you're building your network, which is valuable to any company, to any business. And also like you're giving yourself an asset which other people might not have, which is an audience. And I think like we live in a social media driven world now. People are vying for attention. Every company wants more eyeballs on them. And if you can sit in an interview, there's two people in an interview. You have exactly the same qualifications. You're both great. You're both nice, really personable people. You have 50,000 followers who are going to see everything that you post and they don't. Who are they going to pick? because you're you're adding value to that business in a different way. And I think like it it genuinely does make you more employable because I think again you're just like differentiating yourself from the competition in a kind of area that everyone is looking for right now. And I I believe so much that companies are like waking up to the value that it holds and we speak a lot kind of like about employee generated content and how that's so valuable now. And like, I'm seeing the light bulbs go on in people's heads when we're having these conversations and they're like, yes, that is something that we want to do. Yes. Some people are doing it already. Yes. It's so valuable to our business. And I think if I was a student, I'd be thinking like, how do I become the most employable version of myself? And like, yes, it's effort and yes, it takes time. And yes, you have to be really consistent with it. But like, again, you put yourself in the driving seat and like you're the person that's pushing your career forwards. And I think it's so valuable to employers to see that you also have that like drive and determination to build your own reputation in your industry. Yeah, I think obviously I'm uh, working in this world of early careers now, um, somewhat. <laughs> and, and I think it's like employer branding and how especially like big corporates appear to students has felt so outdated for so long, uh, yeah. you know, the traditional sort of going to careers fairs and making sort of those cringy trailers that they make that doesn't don't resonate with students at all like there is a whole new gap here to actually just you know i you know i for example i've interviewed um the ceo of fellow studios or the manager of sideman these these like brands where they're new they're disruptive they're innovative but they're like making some of the most money and doing some of the most impressive things like Netflix level of quality and, yeah. and I think a lot of that is down to their ability to showcase what's really like working there and yeah, yeah and I think I you know I wonder what you know say an employee is listen to this or sorry an employer is listening to this how can they start to go about actually showcasing their culture online I think like what you say there is so true like there's a huge disconnect between like employers and understanding how people are now looking at jobs and I think like I have so many memories of like walking around careers fairs like drastically hung over thinking ah what the hell am I going to do with my life and like everyone's handing me pens I'm like ah get away (laughs) and I think like in that environment like nothing feels engaging and everything feels the same and I think companies are looking at it as like this is what we've always done so we'll do it again Whereas the reality is like people aren't spending their time at careers first. People are spending their time on TikTok. People are spending their time possibly a bit more on LinkedIn, on Instagram. And I think if I was an employer, I'd be thinking like, where are the best talents spending their time? Everyone's human. Everyone uses social media. And I think I'd be thinking, how do I showcase my company in the best possible way whilst getting their attention in a way that no one else is? And I think that's what posting on social does. And I think what you're saying there about the like cringy trailers of like, I don't know, corporate people sitting in an office, like you're not selling it to me. I want to hear from the CEO what that company is like. I want to hear why they started. I want to hear what their values are. And I think employees or like people that are just entering the workforce, not that they have higher standards, but they're looking for something different. They're looking how a company can add to their life now rather than it just be a place of work. And I think that's why it's so important like the best way you're going to hear that is from an employee. Like if you can find anyone that's a bigger advocate for your brand than someone who actually works there, like Mm. it'll be a miracle because I think like you go through such a long interview process to get a job, like you're vetted. So your values match the company that you're working for. Why would you not have that person as then an ambassador for your brand? Mm. Like it's so confusing. And I think like, yeah, okay, you might have an ambassador at a careers fair who sits there and chats to you, but like, it's not in the same way. Like you're not seeing them in their environment. You're not seeing what they get up to on a day to day. You're not seeing who they are as a person. And I think we drastically underestimate how important it is to match the values of the people around you. And the the way to find that out really is like, how do they show up consistently? 
it's easy to be like all smiles and rainbows on a one off at a careers fair. It's much more difficult to do that consistently over a year posting on social media. And I think that's where you really find out like who people are. And we spend so much time with the people that we work with. Like I want to know the person that I'm sat next to is sound. Yeah. <laughs> that's a that's a very Pretty valid much. point. Yeah. <laughs> and um and I think one thing that I found from doing this podcast is that there's so much power in in telling somebody's story as it actually happened and not like sugarcoating it and making success seem more attainable to the younger generation. Like even for some someone wanting to to join a company and the CEO's risen through the ranks and they talk about the hardships, the successes, what they did. And and I think, you know, on that note of the power of feeling heard in a career sense, I think there'll be people now seeing you as this big name on LinkedIn and yeah. they might put you on this pedestal whether you want to be on it or not. Yeah. They, they might do that. And I think, oh, I, I wonder how I, you know, how I could be as successful as that. And what would you say to someone who's thinking that? And who who are you? Like, you know, take careers out of it your younger self at university what kind of person are you in a career sense I think like to be honest at uni career was not really like at the forefront of my mind like I used uni as a time to have a lot of fun and I I think that part of that was because I didn't really know what I wanted to do and I was like I'm going to make the most of the opportunity that I'm in um and I think like I don't know I think it's okay to feel like that at that point in your life like I think there's so much pressure on students now to have it all figured out and I think it's it's impossible because you don't know how you're going to feel in two three four five years time and I think for me I was always thinking like how do I make an incremental change in the right direction and I think actually I put so much pressure on myself when I left uni to like have the career that I have now but on day one and like constantly, my mom would always be telling me like, don't put so much pressure on yourself. And I, I get so angry because I'd be like, ah, like I need to, like I need to get my shit together. Um, she was right, annoyingly. Yeah. Um, and I think it's just like, I always find it really frustrating when people are like, just don't put pressure on yourself. Like I would have if I mm. couldn't, do you know what I mean? Um, so I think it's just like, don't not aim for the big things, but break it down into smaller chunks. And I think like, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I thought maybe I wanted to work in politics or marketing or be creative or work for a small company. And like, you have so many options, I think, and you feel like you have to choose your entire career when you finish. And that's definitely how I felt. I was like, I need to be successful now because you think like, I've just spent the last four years, like trying to figure out what I want to do. And you see everyone getting the Aldi grad scheme or the Sky grad scheme or like working for these amazing big companies. I think a better question to ask is like, what would I be happy doing? Like what is going to make me happy in the next one, two years? And I think for most people that are just finishing uni and entering the world of work, it isn't working 15 hour days. It isn't having salary a salary of a hundred grand. It's like having an opportunity to be in the same city as your mates. It's like having enough money that you can go out and do things that you want, but also have a bit more freedom to not be chained to your desk every hour of the day. And I think if you adjust your mindset a bit to think more like that, rather than like, I need to update my LinkedIn to this amazing Unreal company so everyone knows how great I'm doing. I think it's, yeah, just like a bit of a mindset change. My final question to you, which I ask every single one of my guests is when you... You know, when you were at Leeds University, you would have a certain idea of what success might go on to look like in your career. And then fast forward of everything you've learned and achieved along the way, what is your definition of success and, and how has it changed? That is a good question. I feel like this is such a hard question because it like, is. <laughs> I've never, to be completely honest, like I don't really set goals in my career. I've never really had anything like concrete that I want to hit a benchmark and achieve because I think, what do you do then? <laughs> And I think like for me, it's always been thinking about like the day ahead or the week ahead. And like, am I happy? Am I having a good time? Am I spending time with the people that I care about? And I think like it was that when I was at uni. And it's, I mean, I had moments where I was like, I need to have this like amazing career. But for the most part, I was just thinking about like the next week. And and to be honest, I still think that now, like, I don't think too far ahead because I think you can get carried away with yourself of like, I need to be X, Y, Z. I always try and keep it like real for the next 24 hours. And I think like by thinking 
a little bit smaller, you actually open yourself up to more opportunities, I think. Claudia, thanks so much for coming on. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> Great.